Well, we see uh, that the markets remain in this uh, state of chop and slop. Um, this uh, trendlessness started in uh, late last year, um, and it continues to this day. Uh, that said, the, there is a quite a bit of pessimism out there as well. I think investors are getting exhausted by uh, this kind of market pattern, um, and we all know that uh, the markets like to fool the majority, uh, the majority of the time. So, with all this pets pessimism out there, it's tilts the odds in favor of a breakout of the major industry indices rather than a breakdown. Um, but uh, you know, we'll have to uh, stay tuned to see what happens. Um, leading stocks bounced anemically, as we know. Um, there's just a lot of noise in the system and a lot of gaming the system. And so, again, you have to be very quick to take your profits in this kind of environment. I'm going to go through uh, some stocks. There's a couple that do exemplify um, that strategy. Uh, let's start with REGN, Regeneron Pharmaceuticals. Now, um, here's the stock we put on the list uh, on, the, on the 8th. Right, uh, let's see, that's the eighth right there, and uh, the markets have been sloppy and sideways, and so has Regeneron, but it looks as if uh, it's tightening up, trying to tighten up, so if the markets can break out to the upside, this will probably break out along along with the markets. So if you uh, are sitting in a position in this, uh, so far it hasn't done anything particularly wrong, um, and you might want to stay tuned to see how that plays out. We also have uh, T-Rex. That was also added on the same day um, as the eighth year, and it was a viable gap up. But as we cited, it closed in the lower half of its range. Um, that means less risk by buying at that level because you're going to sell it on this day when it breaks below. Um, well, it not only breaks below the low, but it also uh, violates you know one, the one to two percent rule of um, giving these uh, viable gap ups. Uh, you know that one to two percent leeway. The other thing is, when the stock does this sort of a pattern and closes at the low, you might not even give it 2%. You maybe give it half a percent or 1%, and then you, you cut your losses uh, that much quicker. We also have uh, MOH. That was put on the list uh, yeah, also on the 8th. And um, that's here. It was on, on a viable gap up. It cleared its 50-day moving average, and it's gone higher since. Um, where you take profits, there, there might be nothing wrong. If the markets get into some trouble, there's nothing wrong with taking your, uh, this, this looks like you, you get about 6% out of the trade if you bought it at the close here, and you sold it where it's trading now, it's about a 6% move. Um, again, it's, it's not a whole lot of profit, but your account taking these sorts of baby steps can uh, grow over the uh, ensuing months if uh, you keep your stops tight and you keep taking your profits like this. But I'm not saying to take it now, I'm just saying if the markets get into some trouble, then you want to keep your stops real tight on something like this because you want to keep your profits. Another stock is CYBR. We put that on the list a couple times. Um, I bring this one up because uh, here um, you have this, uh, this move to the upside, but then on this day here, it has a mini gap down. And you want to be selling at the open. Notice where the opening price is. Just just get rid of it. Don't ask questions. You know you're back below uh, the support, and um, and you can see here it's uh, having a, kind of taking on a wedging look as it tries to rally back. So um, you should be out of that one if you if you did uh, try your hand at it. Now there's AYI, which has done very well. Um, this was put on the list on uh, the 29th of April, so that was uh, right right here, and it's gone up uh, considerably since. So again, this is another stock um, that's a good example of take your profits when you have them. The stock isn't doing anything particularly wrong, but you want to keep your stops real tight on this to lock in those profits. RAX, RAX. This was put on the list, um, let's see here, yeah, on the 11th, so what is that? There we go. The, on the 11th. Um, now, you can see that the next day it reported earnings. You can see on this day, you, you have a high volume down day. It's still above the moving average support, but it doesn't matter. I mean, you got to look at it in terms of 
earnings roulette here. So it gives you the stock gives you a very valuable clue that it's not doing well. Um, actually, we put I think we put this one on. Where did we put this one on the list? Maybe it was on. No, I think it was on this day we put on the list. So on this day, when it uh, has a down day on volume, you can see how how tall that volume bar is compared to all the other days. Um, you sell it at the op at the close. You you sell it at the close, no questions, um, thinking that it might be telling you a clue, and certainly the next day it does gap down. Finally, uh, I think there's S. Uh, yeah, this one SKX. This is kind of like AYI. It hasn't done anything wrong whatsoever. We put it on the list here on the viable gap up, and it just keeps moving higher. Um, hang on to this one, but keep your stops real tight as well because you have a nice profit in the stock uh, as of today. And uh, with that, I'll turn it over to Gil. Uh, another uh, another day in the market, same story, a lot of volatility and very little net progress. But you know, I, I still think that the proper approach in this market is to not chase strength. I know there are some situations that work. This SKX definitely is one of them, but that's that's far and few between, I think. This RAX looked strong at one point, but it failed pretty quickly on the breakout. Um, I, li I still like names like you know Tesla I, I own, and they had a little pullback today, uh, and it's holding up okay. There's this pocket pivot we talked about last week, so it's up to, you know it went up over 20 points from that point a week ago. And I think these less orthodox plays are where you're going to get more upside. It's kind of like th this idea with um, Lanet. Remember, you're buying it as it rounds out the base. Let's, let me make this a little bigger. As it rounds out the base here, you're buying it in here as it's coming, trying to come around it. And even though it's not guaranteed it's going to work, I think buying these things like this, this is where you'll get a move that is much more significant than what you're, what you're seeing after breakouts. So I tend to favor this sort of setup when I see it. And if you look back, you know, Loco is continuing higher. Uh, let's let me shrink this baby down. You know what? Let me. You can see Loco continuing higher today after earnings. Uh, it's moving higher, but again, this is one that's been rounding out. Um, and and so. You know, with Tesla, I see that as being a similar situation, and I thought it was viable. We've been talking about it for over a month now, and I've liked it since this move here back in late March, early I guess early April, uh, and it's just continuing to flash pocket pips, and it's coming up the right side of the base. So, you know, my guess is it's going to get near the highs if the market continues going higher. And if you look at the indexes, yeah, you're just chopping back and forth, but you know, what was a signal that? You were at a bottom here, at least short term, and this IBD went to marketing correction. And when the market looks like it's going into a correction, that's usually when it turns right around and goes higher. So yeah, that, that's really all you're looking at. And you can try to make a lot out of you know the distribution and oh, it rallies back on lighter volume or heavier volume or you know all this other stuff. I think we got to keep in mind that maybe 90% of that volume is uh, high frequency. Trading funds, HFTs, uh, you know, for all we know. And so I'm not, not so sure volume is that big of a deal unless I'm seeing something pull back on a volume drive. I'm watching, what are you guys all buying? Tesla because I just mentioned it. It's like up a buck from when I first started talking about it two minutes ago. But I think the thing's going higher probably. Anyways, um, so, you know, things I'm looking at, I've been watching Baba and it looked like a short. Because you had at one time you had this sort of head and shoulders, but you know in hindsight I would say you didn't really get any rounding out of a shoulder, so it's hard to say what this is. It could just be the bottom of a big base. So you undercut the lows here last week. You get some big volume support up the lows. That looks constructive, okay, on a more macro scale. So then you get the big gap up after earnings on huge volume. You hold tight. You get a little pullback into the 65-day exponential. Uh, that can be a useful uh, moving average, but the uh, the bottom line is the intraday low here is 84.91, so I think that would be your ultimate downside stop. But this looks to me like it wants to turn, and they have some uh, positive things going on. With uh, yesterday announced they're going to uh, install, I guess uh, AliPay or something, which is their mobile payment system. Um, 
in China, and they also have something going on with Disney. So there's some positive developments, and the earnings were very strong. So the thing is turning around, and you know, it's been like JD is another name in the space. And this is one again that you know you're along the lows of this base is where you could buy and you get a nice sustained move. And now as it's trying to break out, um, let's see here. You know, here's a breakout and uh, it's just kind of sputtering around. So again, my preferred entry points are pullbacks, and some examples here would be um, looking at Mobileye the other day. And I thought this was a viable pullback into the 10-day, and it's trying to come up to the high. So I think this one, you know, pocket pivot volume signature here. I would call this a pocket pivot here because you gapped up. That was on earnings, though, and uh, and it was off the 10-day moving average because you closed the prior day at the 10-day moving average. So you would consider that move to be something coming off of the 10-day moving average. And then the pullback here on lighter volume, well, at least it was a lot lighter during the, uh, the morning hours my time and the thing turns around and comes out so it looks like it's trying to go uh, we were, Dr. Kay was pointing out cyber and I would I might beg to differ a little bit on that one I don't know if that's necessarily a sell um, but I'll get to that in just a second Fortinet is one of the stronger acting uh, cyber security names you can see in the base this thing's actually been a leader in the group and it's had a sustained uptrend and it's hanging tight along the 10 day so it becomes viable at the 10 day uh, Paul Alton Networks is moving up. They, they announce earnings at the end of the month, so you know he comes into the 10-day on light volume. If you're going to buy it, that's where you buy it. Here's the stinky spot to buy it, as I call it, where it, it's coming down. The volume's picking up. Oh my God, it looks terrible. Right at the 50-day, just close your eyes, hold your nose, and buy it. And the next day, it moves up. You get some wedging action, but the pullback, in my view, helps to correct the wedge. So again, you have to be opportunistic here. So I'm looking at cyber. And yeah, I see the gap down. Um, a couple of things to keep in mind here, though, is that number one, uh, the stock's had a lot of upside, so it's a little bit ob too obvious, I think, for it to simply break out of a cup with handle and it's going to be off to the races, especially in this market. The best move in cyber occurred off of the 50-day moving average, so you had to be buying it down here. And now here you are again, sitting at the the, just above the 50-day, I would be watching it for a test of the 50-day at 58.89, 58.90, whatever you want to call it, with all those nines behind the 58 there and the eight. Uh, you know, it is wedging a little bit, but that depends on where volume ends up today. So at uh, nine o'clock in the morning, so we're not even halfway through the day. You're already trading almost as much. I'm going to say more than half of, of yesterday's volume. So you're probably going to pick up volume today. So you may get support here. And here you are, if you look at this really, realistically, you're forming a cup, three weeks down on a handle, uh, you got support last week, you see how this thing acts in here, and the volume's higher, maybe it's undercut this low, it fakes everybody out, because it looks bad, and then it turns around and goes, you know, it's, it's so typical of how stocks act in this market, and I absolutely do not believe that you can apply the rules of the 90s, uh, and before that to the market anymore. It just doesn't work that way. And so you can beat your head against the wall trying to apply, you know, pull out your little handbook from 1990 and, and start reciting the rules from there and operate on that basis. I don't think they apply anymore. So I think in this case, you've got to be opportunistic and watch how this plays out. So this tends to be a volatile name. You have an IPO lockup still in effect. Uh, you know, it's like you think it was March, beginning of March when the stock came under lockup. That was right around in here, and the thing turned around and went higher uh, after that and faked everyone out. Maybe it was early April, I forget. But in any case, uh, stock has gone higher since the IPO lockup uh, expiration. So uh, you still have insiders maybe want to sell some stock, uh, venture capital firms, whatnot. So they may come in and sell it, and you have some gaps off the peak. But again, it's had a pretty good size run off the lows, and it was off the lows that you needed to be buying it. So now as it pulls in, I would keep an eye on it. I wouldn't write it off. If you bought this, I think you're dumb because you don't buy strength in this market. You buy weakness. Strength can flag a stock as a constructive situation. But I think if you're going to give yourself at least a chance at getting a low-risk entry point and uh, – getting off to a good start with a stock, 
you're better off buying on the weakness on preferably light volume. So the voodoo volume signature is very valid, I think, in this market. But, you know, buying into this kind of a move, I think, is just plain dumb. Uh, chasing strength, just plain dumb. Um, yesterday, you had rumors that uh, FireEye might be bought out by Cisco. And I personally don't think buying stocks on the basis of a buyout rumor is an investment strategy, per se. But you did get a pocket pivot. And the stock is pulling into the 50-day moving average, so I don't know. Maybe they do get bought out, and maybe uh, yesterday's pocket pivot has some validity. But, you know, how do you know it doesn't end up like, what's CRM doing today? It's up a little bit, but there have been rumors about CRM being bought out, and nothing has really panned out. Uh, in fact, most of the rumors, first Oracle, or I think SAP, then Oracle, then Microsoft, all of those have pretty much been quashed. So you can see the indexes were up almost 160 on the Dow. Nasdaq's up 52. I think what's a key thing to keep an eye on here is that, in my view, I think you can get a, a sustained rally if the Russell 2000 is able to get back above the 50-day uh, moving average. Notice it's been living below the moving average, and so it gives the market this sort of flavor of uh, moving towards big cap names. And like Dr. K was saying, there's been a lot of fear in the market consternation you know you you had the other day you had a, a meltdown or you've been having a meltdown in the european bond market but that didn't end up killing the market in fact on uh was that tuesday when did that sell-off occur tuesday right yeah no yeah tuesday, yeah okay yeah Mark's, Mark's day, uh, been yeah and, right here uh, and, and well, so every everything right off the bat uh the indexes are getting hammered um you know that we're gapping down and uh, what happens? You know, by the close, the uh, S&P uh, is is above, is bounces off the 50-day. The Nasdaq's back above the 50-day. Uh, volume is light, so you didn't get a lot of selling. So, so there is some resilience on the sell-offs. On the other hand, there's not been a lot of excitement on the upside when you move up. So you're still trapped in the range. And most people will tell you that when the market tightens up like this, Dr. K, maybe you could uh, shed some light on this. When the market gets into a tight consolidation and has been moving sideways for a period of time, what, does it tend to come to break out to the upside or the downside, or is there any pattern? It, it tends to be constructive that it's getting tighter, provided that uh, it doesn't have um, a huge number of distribution days in the pattern. Um, and so that kind of constructive activity usually results to an upside breakout. Um, the problem with this market is that while the amplitude is diminishing um, on the NASDAQ, uh, in the S&P, the number of distribution days is, is still remains quite high. Um, so, you know, you have these counter effects um, that are playing tug of war against each other as to whether the market's going to break out or break down. And it's like, you know, go, go, to, go to Vegas and play roulette right now because uh, it's anyone's guess. I mean, it is, it is good that there's pessim more pessimism out there. Um, which means, I'd say, like I said, the odds are tilted slightly in favor of an upside breakout, but there's really nothing overwhelming um, to support the case of the market going uh, in, in going higher or lower at this juncture. We need more information. Yeah, so, I, so it's, it's you know it's unclear, but I'm now watching the Dow's up 170, pushing 171. I figure they got the the algos are all on buy until you die so uh, there I think they're just gonna push the market higher throughout the day so PPI coming in very soft weak retail sales uh, pretty much the same story we've been talking about for a long time which is that the Fed cannot lower rates End the story they're not gonna lower rates and they can talk about it all they want but they're not going to lower rates and I've been watching you know for example I, I like uh, I've been trading the euro against the dollar for the last couple of weeks, and um, you can see the dollar's been in a steady downtrend. So the dollar's are already telling you what's going on. You don't need the Fed to uh, interpret their uh, their data-dependent, filtered uh, uh, talk about what they may or may not do. Uh, my view is the U.S. economy is not anywhere near as strong as the government, the manufactured government data states so you know I'm not uh, I'm not a believer there so I don't think the Fed's gonna ever lower rates or raise rates rather 
um, software tool works, or I'm sorry, Skyworks Solutions. Why do I always want to call it that? I, I think it's a symbol. Um, anyway, so, uh, Skyworks Solutions. Let me get that one straight. I've been watching a semiconductor name. Everybody knows it. it's had one of the better uptrends of, of most names out there. And it's holding along the 50-day. I pointed this out the other day as a voodoo pullback into the 50-day uh, at uh, 95, 88, I think it was. And stock's up a little bit couple of bucks from there so it's acting okay somebody had uh, mentioned to me they thought this was a uh, late stage failed base but there's a couple of issues with that interpretation and I think it also proves that you know little knowledge is a dangerous thing or can be a dangerous thing uh, it's first of all stock wasn't living below the 50 day uh, a few days ago it's above the 50 day uh, the second issue is that there really is no breakout attempt. So even if you were if you were above the 50-day and you had a breakout attempt that failed and the stock was, say, below the 20-day moving average, and you can see it was sitting right on top of the 10, 20, and 50-day moving averages here, uh, it's not a late-stage failed base. So it's like someone else emailed me telling me MDVN is a voodoo, voodoo uh, buy here, and I don't really see it maybe they see this but this stock's kind of living below the 50 day and just because sitting on top of the 10 day doesn't really make it all that uh, solid as a buy uh, situation so let's see do we have any brilliant questions today um Somebody's asking, do you have any idea what's the story behind ICPT? You mean Intercept Pharmaceuticals? Do you know anything about this, Dr. K? Do I need to care about it? I mean, it's trying to break out, I guess. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's had some gap ups, gap downs. It's still, it's, you know, it's the nature of uh, the industry it's in. You know, I mean, it looks like it's trying, you know, it had a favorable earnings report. It's trying to go higher. Um, you know, the thing about these that, that I don't like is that uh, they're still kind of mid mid band in a fairly sloppy pattern. If you look at the weekly chart on this, yeah, you and can see it. Yeah, it means it's going to be uh, more more volatile than uh, than I care for. More volatility in this pattern than I care for. So this is not something I'm uh, particularly interested in at this time. Yeah, I don't. I'm you know, I don't know who cares what the story is. It doesn't really thrill me, and it's another one of these uh, news-oriented. What money losing biotech? Is it a is it a money losing biotech? Whoops. No, it's got some. It's got almost no sales, but no, it, well, yeah, it's also been um, it's been negative. It's one of these typical typical uh, stage losing a dollar seventy eight. Yeah, sales of one point five million. Whoa, that's a big stock if I ever saw one. Yeah, this is junk. Don't waste your time with this kind of stuff. Digital Ally is up there with Taser. You know, it's gapping down, and uh, it's like Taser. I guess it's subject to news about uh, you know who's using their cameras and who isn't. But I'm not. We never told anyone to buy this one, so I'm not going to buy the gap down. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think solar is interesting because you've had you've seen the the utility scale solars get clocked. You know. First solar is looking like it's just flagging on the way to lower lows. Sun power doesn't look any better below its 50 day as well. But these has made their uh, power inverters or solar inverters uh, that store, I guess these are make the process of, of uh, harvesting and storing the solar energy much more efficient. So this one's had a great move. So you had the gap up here. You could have bought that Bible gap up. And so it probably needs to catch up to the 10 day but there are two companies that are using their products uh vivent solar which had this weird they came out with earnings they missed 20 in, i think 20 cents they missed or, or uh, 19 cents something like that but they still came out with uh 11 cents uh up 57 percent on earnings sales 9.6 million up 172 percent that's uh, they've been doing triple digits, but not not huge. But that th these guys are using Sedge's uh, or Solar Edge's uh, products, and you have this sort of big, bizarre bounce off the 50. I think the only way again, this is the stinky spot, and so you just close your eyes, 
hold your nose and buy it right at the 50 day and see if it bounces if it doesn't then you run quickly but that would have worked and you got to kind of got this pocket pivot huge uh, volume support off the 50 day so it tells you that they want to buy them. but i think maybe the leader in the residential space is solar city which is also uh using solar ridges products and they're re you know residential and solar. so so you're seeing the utility uh, scale solar power names uh, not breaking down and, and now these residential ones have been coming back and so I you know I think this one was viable here off the 20 day sort of a pocket pivot a 20 day pocket pivot which is something I'll look at and I thought this was viable up along here it may go higher but it's interesting to see these names are trying to act better. So <clears throat> that's one area I've been watching. Uh, Netflix had a pocket pivot right here. Uh, and I would say that's roughly off the 10-day. And it looks like it wants to go higher. Facebook today is uh, bouncing on news that they're, what is it they're doing? Something about articles or something or advertising or they're going to form a search engine or something. But it, this is not atypical. When you have a big stock leader that breaks down, it may, in fact, if it's topping, it may spend some time going back and forth between the 200-day and the 50-day. And here you are right at the 50-day now, so we'll see where this goes. But, I mean, I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me if you saw this thing come out of here. Uh, meanwhile, LinkedIn is making lower lows after this gap down, which I, I view as a shortable gap down using the uh, high of the day as a stop. And, of course, here's Twitter. Twittering away there and looking like it's going to head lower. So, you know, these are, other than Facebook, we're just trying to recover. The group is pretty weak. And that doesn't seem like a place I want to be uh, hanging out. Data, this might be working. You had the opportunity to buy it three days ago. Uh, that would be on Tuesday on the market sell off and the pullback down into the uh, Bible gap up low. <clears throat> so that works. You like this name, Dr. K? Um, you know, this uh, we've we've taken a look at this one a few times, um, and you know, it's, it's had this is the second gap up in its pattern. Um, so you know, when you look at the fundamentals, um, they're they're strong. You know, sales, earnings, um, institutional sponsorship has been growing every quarter. You know, so it's got a lot of the right things that you want to see. Um, in the pattern, and so you know, there's you know, did a gap up um, five days ago on a strong earnings report. So uh, yeah, I mean, this one, this one looks okay. Another one I'm uh, thought was viable the other day is Splunk. You had the pullback into the 20-day after the uh, pocket pivot breakout attempt that failed. And so you come into the 20-day moving average, and now you're trying to break out. So it looks like you had another pocket pivot yesterday off the 10-day line. So this one looks like it's trying to go higher, but here's the overall pattern. So maybe it does, you know. I don't know. Um, but it's working right now. That's all I know. I'm noticing Mobilize moving up. It's now turning positive. Come up. Let's see. Amberella, they came out with earnings at the beginning of June, and they're, they're, they're hanging out in the base. But again, you got to buy it here. It looks like it's breaking down below the 50-day moving average, and it's not. Watching this one trade today. Let's see what it looks like on the 620. Trying to round, come around here on the 620. So it's possible it could be viable. I don't know. I'm going to keep my eyes on this one today. Market's up 181. On the Dow, Nasdaq's up 57.02 and pushing higher. So, you know, they have the algos on buy, so they're going to push it. And I think there's probably enough uh, stuff that's acting well where you can, if you're using, uh, you know, opportunistic buy points, I think you can come in and uh, take some positions. So using pullbacks in stocks this morning rather than chasing strength seems to be the smarter approach. GoPro is uh, another one of these potential roundabouts. The only thing I don't like is that Wellington Management, which had taken, a, I think, a 12% stake, cut that in half more or less. 
and that didn't look so good to me so I'm not so sure about this it's trying to come around do you have any take on this, Dr. K? Do you like do you use uh, GoPros? Um, you know, this is it's another one of these uh, names that are. The reality is that you know, one of the, uh, as oh, wait a second, change, hold on a second. Uh, and as people spend more time away from their computers and more, that's really annoying when uh, you know you open a page and it just goes right, right. into the audio. Right. And, and that's most of them have caught up, got got a clue not to do that, um, especially these commercials. But anyway, um, now that that was something on Facebook. <laughs> That uh, I wanted to get a little bit more color on uh, its its move uh, today, but um, anyway, this is a GoPro. You know, it's one of these names that are you know they're off the bottom, and these are the names. If you're going to play a pattern like this, you got to be very quick to take your profits because these things are going to have a lot of overhead. And as you can see, you know, it had the, it had that gap up on a strong earnings report, and then promptly uh, about faced and uh, went south. Yeah. So, you know, to me. You know, if it gets real quiet in you, yeah, you might get a voodoo uh, sort of pattern um, that could be actionable. But um, right now, I'm I'm not interested. Uh, give me one second here. Okay. Moving along, let's see what do we got here. Um, Starbucks hanging along you got to buy it on weakness again you know along the 20 day so that works uh, for me at least anyways um, any more questions coming through Shaq well it gapped up after breaking down so you know what you got anything to say here dr. K yeah I mean it, it went straight down gone straight back up on uh, strong earnings reports um, yeah, it looks pretty sloppy in the pattern, so it's not something I'm particularly interested in yet. Uh, you know, the sales are strong, but the earnings are pretty lackluster. Um, so I think there's a bit too much risk uh, taking taking together the fundamentals and the technical action that's been just um, quite noisy um, as of late. Yeah, and the other thing is you're buying this down here, not not up here now. So if you own it still and you're sitting with it, it depends on you know how much room you're going to give it. If you're asking us if you should sell it, that's kind of a stupid thing to do because you should already know which, how you're going to handle it in terms of your stops. Um, Dr. K, well, you suggested last week that this is not your kind of market, meaning I guess your kind of market. Um are you finding any individual stocks to buy or just sticking with ETFs? I've been sticking more with ETFs, um, but that said, you know, there, if, if a stock sets up just right, um, I'm going to take a, take a shot with it. But uh, there's very few stocks in this kind of market that set up just right that got my, get my interest. But that doesn't mean uh, you have a different style of trade, you know, where you're buying on weakness, voodoo days, that sort of thing. Um, where you can do very well. I mean, as Gil has proven last year, he's up triple digits and uh, you know, baby step your account and stick stay with this uh, strategy um, can do very well for you in this market environment. But you also have to be in tune with what your strengths and weaknesses are and don't force yourself into um, a style that isn't yours. Um, if, if you try, you, there's nothing wrong with trying your hand with a style that's not yours, but make sure the money you risk is, um, is on the minimal side. So that uh, you can you can identify um, whether uh, whether you can make that style work for yourself. Let's see more question. Uh, MLNX, Melanox. I think we talked about this. It, it, it's kind of a big pod. Like wait, I'm sorry. What are we doing? Let me link this. Do here we go. Now it's kind of a choppy uptrend. That's we looked at this already. So I mean, there's nothing here that excites me. Dr. K, anything excite you here? Yeah, no, it's got that. Um, it's got enough choppiness in it. So you buy this one on strength, and you're probably it's probably not going to go anywhere. Um, yeah, the price pattern tells me all I need to know. So no, I'm not. This is not a stock that interests me. Not at this time. Yeah, I guess if you're going to play this at all, you buy it at the lows of the channel. So, but you know. We don't have anything new on this one. XON. 
uh, and checks on flash of pocket pivot here after earnings and that was interesting because it's kind of broken down but notice how now it looks like it's violated the 50 day so you're holding the 65 day I don't know maybe it bounces here keep an eye on it I would Zyops probably off the table I think I'm not going to touch that and that was off the table here when it failed at the 50 day so that wasn't hard to figure out I don't think Broadcom yeah, everybody loves Broadcom. That's what it looks like. Chops, chops higher, but uh, you know, it's again, it's up, so I'm not going to buy it. You got anything to say about this, Dr. K? Yeah, same problem as the other stock. You know, it's uh, it doesn't really make much progress uh, to the upside before pulling back in. So you know, you got to. It's a choppy pattern. You got to be playing this one on weakness. And if you don't like playing stocks on weakness, then don't play this one. Yeah, and yeah, it's just very choppy. Is there some long term? You know, I think for my money, if I was going to buy a semiconductor, I'd be looking at this or this. NXP pulling in, volume is drawing up, pulling into the 50-day moving average. Did they already announce earnings? Let's see, NXPY. Yeah, they did uh, a couple weeks ago. And yeah, it was uh, met with yeah, approval. That looks kind of nice. Are, they're buying FSL, right? Prescale, which looks the same, yeah. Um, so those kind of look interesting to me. Um, let's see. Cavium is, is one semi, though, that's looking kind of grim. Not sure what to make of that. It's probably there in the wrong space. Cyber is trying to come up. So you see what I'm talking about? You, you, you may trade more volume today, and this thing could end up going higher. Um, yeah, you know, th this uh, this uh, CyberArk uh, company, um, where, where it opened uh, three days ago, was if you had if you had any of this stock, um, it would have been my I still would have been selling it right at the open because at the opening price uh, the 50 days five percent away from the opening price and that to me is is too much risk. Um, it didn't go all the way down to the 50 day, but it certainly could have, and and therefore you know if you had anything in the stock, sell it at the open. But then, as Gil maintained earlier. Um, it's still an act. It could be an actionable name if it does the right thing from here on, you know, because when it gets close to the 50 day, it's been shown to start to go higher. Uh, but you have to see the right price volume action to get involved uh, in this one. If it, uh, but it, it is certainly a viable stock still that could be in play. Yeah, gold, I think, is interesting here because you had a viable gap up type move, and you notice that it's one, two, three attempts at higher highs. The first two failed, so now the rule of three says that you might succeed, and you do. You gap up higher again today, and you're at the 200-day moving average. So the the metals are trying to turn, and silver, of course, is looking like gold. So, but what is this telling you? Uh, it's telling you that the dollar, and you know. Yeah, the dollar is continuing lower, and that it's telling you that the dollar is probably going to continue lower, and the uh, Fed is probably stuck and not going to be raising rates. I mean, bonds are also have been selling off, and uh, but you know what strikes me as odd here is you you have bonds selling off, which would be telling you that what interest rates are rising, right? And yet it's the market that's raising rates, not the Fed. So a little bit of a strange cross current. Right? Can you make anything of that, Dr. K? You've got dollar dropping, gold rallying, implying that uh, rates are probably going to stay down or liquidity stays in the system. But yet you have bonds selling off uh, and interest rates rising in the market. What, what do you make of that, if anything? Well, yeah, interest rates have certainly uh, certainly moved higher with the lower, um, lower bond prices. Um, and the dollar, on the other hand, um, well, had a, it had a lot of strength, and so now it's retracing some of that strength on the basis probably that uh, interest rates um, might be slow to uh, to uh, move higher in the ensuing months because the economy just doesn't seem to want to um, recover properly. But it's a yeah, it is a bit of a contradiction if you have a, uh, a weaker a dollar pulling back in anticipation of continued continued low rates. Um, then you should see the bond market rally on that basis right. because in other words, more money you're going to more QE is going to be pumped, pumped into bonds and that should put the price up. Right. So there's some conflict uh, the market's telling us here. Um, uh, so it's, yeah, it's an interesting question on uh, what move the market's going to make next. Right. And because the bond like certainly have, have taken it on the chin. Um, yeah. Over the last few weeks. 
So I mean, it's a little contradictory, but you know, you get if you get these decouplings in traditional uh, correlations, and that happens from time to time in a QE market, I think, and that's pretty much what you're seeing. So let's go through some some more names. CRTO. Uh, well, it's breaking out, so the business is similar to Splunk, so they're both moving together, right? So, which means nothing. TSCM is a dog. I wouldn't touch it with a ten foot pole. So. And let's see, we're still up 170, NASDAQ up 55, 56, somewhere in there. And just kind of pumping along here. Just kind of going to flip through. GoGo is, is trying to recover. Now, see how this looks ugly here? It's broken the 50 day. So, you know, you've got a big outside reversal, and that came on earnings. So you think, okay, sell it, but it's holding up. Uh, sometimes this is correlated a little bit to the uh, airlines, but you're seeing Delta trying to come back. Alaska Airlines is holding up. Southwest Airlines looking a little uglier, but not really blowing apart. But you still there's weakness in the airlines. Sometimes I think this might it might affect this, but in general their their business is still booming. The other one, Global Global Eagle, and then I think you have uh, is it Panasonic Avionics? I think is a another. It's a Japanese traded company. I think that they don't uh, trade on the U.S. markets. I don't believe. Um, but Go go trying to come back. I think in terms of the ones to play as stocks, this is probably your better one. But notice how it's back above the 50-day volume is drying up on the pullback this morning. So typical uh, voodoo stuff. Gigamon. I you know I, I watch this one even here on this gap up move and then it's gapped up after earnings. So now it's holding tight. Tried to go higher here but failed. So you know neither here nor there and going tight sideways. So that's the overall pattern though. You're finding a lot of overhead. Virgin Atlantic is the weakest airline. That that's true. That's very good. You can see that chart just keeps trending lower. So yes. Also known as thank you for telling me what I already know, Gar. <laughs> Any other questions, anybody? I don't really have a lot. You know, I'm wa I've been watching stocks on the short side, but they're not giving me any 620 signal. Look, Gilead continues higher on no volume. There was a pocket pivot here, but it has pocket pivots all over the place. Shell Gene is pushing up into the, the 65 day. It could go higher into the 50 day. Maybe it just turns around and goes higher, period, you know, if the market goes higher. Wouldn't surprise me. Um, somebody asking about Sedge. We already talked about Sedge. So you had the buyable gap up several days ago. Was that Monday, I guess? Uh, no, last Friday. And you could have bought that, but I've been liking the stock since I told everyone to buy it here. Around 24, so you know pullbacks in the 10-day, 20-day occur. I guess those are viable points in the stock. Obviously, most clear in uh, hindsight, but uh, you know that's that's where you're coming after. Now it's up here. You got to wait for the 10-day to come after, uh, come up, come up to the price. Vasco Data is uh, one another uh, security stock. You know it's it's got this funky pattern. It's trying to come out, but the bottom line is you don't buy strength. You buy it on weakness if you're going to buy it. And here you come into the 50-day. Volume is not heavy, but it's not looking so great. Maybe here. But, you know, I still think you focus on names like uh, CyberArk, uh, Fortinet, and Palo Alto Networks. Those seem to be the stronger names in the group. Of course, we, we know what happened with QLYS, but what do you expect with a thin piece of garbage like that? What's the other one that's thin and garbagey? CUDA. Yeah, there's another thin piece of garbage. The, and I don't know they, these stocks. They're not they're not big stock names. They trade barely anything. And uh, I think your big stock names are cyber. Whoops, how that you get in there? Palo Alto Networks, Fortinet. You know, even FireEye probably could be considered a big stock name in the group. Um, but you know, if, you, if you're buying it on the basis of uh, it's forward potential that you know here's the base it is trying to come up the right side maybe it does do it you got a pocket pivot you pulled right into the 50-day moving average I don't know maybe you, you give it a shot here here I'll buy a bunch of it right here we'll see if it turns let's see what the the 620 looks like well you are turning on the 620 or you're trying to let me take a look at this again. 
Where are you, 620? Here we go. Um, yeah, you're trying. You're kind of flattening out. Yeah, and it's well. Yeah, I, I guess it's trying to come out. I guess it's gonna turn. Maybe it'll turn. Okay. You'll buy five thousand right here. See what happens. Wish me luck. Um, <clears throat> why don't you all buy it and push it up for me now that I have it? Uh, let's see what else. CPHD. Cephade, uh, here's the biotech that goes nowhere, so I don't know what I'm supposed to tell anybody on this, but typical, you know, it doesn't chop it around. There's no real big trend in this. Like, show me something I can make some real money in, you know? that That's what I say. And Sedge has been a good name, but it's kind of thin, you know? So maybe Baba is a big stock, and I think that may be something that if money needs to come into this market, maybe that's where it comes into. Um, you're seeing some of these Chinese. Is Cheetah Mobile a Chinese stock? It is, isn't it? So, oh, yeah. I Computer Software that, uh... Security. It's uh, China, yeah. Mobile Software Developer Utility and Security yeah. Applications for PC and Android Phone Users. So they're, they're flying out of there. Um, there was another one I saw this morning, uh, China Games. What's the symbol on that one? CHGM? CGMA? Nope. Let me think. Hold on. I can find it. Let's go here. Let's look at all securities. Well, first let's put a filter on this. Uh, price up, minimum volume, erg over 150. And we'll do uh, all securities. And let's see what's... I know I saw one of these things going nuts today. Holler if you see it. Could do this probably better. I'm not sure why it wants to go where I don't want to go. Yeah, CMGE. So here you go. This one's trying to move. Eh, not, nothing really thrilling there. Hey, there goes FireEye. Look at that. 42.13 now. I bought my shares at uh, 41.95. So why don't you guys get in there and push it up some more for me. Thank you. Okay, there we go. But again, I'm, this is just objective. You know, I'm looking at it. Maybe they get bought out. Maybe they don't. But all I know is I saw the 620 cross. I bought it. And you, you kind of held up pretty well here along the lows. You get some selling. I think, you know, Cisco came out with earnings yesterday, and they said we're not. I guess there was no news of them buying FireEye. And so what happens is uh, the people who ran in yesterday at the highs, like a bunch of morons, uh, run out of the stock in the morning, and uh, it comes down. And now, you know, on the basis of maybe some of these other names doing better, like the Cyber. Or the Fortinet, which is hanging in there, and the Palo Alto Networks. Those are the big ones in my view. Um, FireEye, in terms of, in industry terms, it is actually, along with Palo Alto Networks, their products are the most popular. So they are a big stock name. So if the other, if these other three are moving and Cyber is able to recover, then I would expect this may come out of here. So anyways, I have some skin in the game now, so I'm not biased at all. Uh, let's see, CMG, everybody's hitting me with that. Yeah, okay. So, you know, it's trying to come around. But I notice there's some strength in that area. And JD is strong, so I'm thinking Baba is an ugly duckling type play. And uh, what's the high here? 89. If it gets to the high here, then you could be headed back at least to the top of the gap at 90, or the bottom of the gap here at 92, and maybe you could fill the gap uh, if the market goes higher. But, you know, this is the type of name that I like. 
Tesla has worked really well for me over the last month or so, and I've been playing it. You know, I can you actually can come in and buy this and then sell it at the end of the day and come back and buy it, usually at a better price, excuse me, the next day, because uh, it'll pull in. And, uh, you know, thing looks to me like it wants to go higher, and you've got 25 million shares worth of dumb short interest in the stock right now because it's going higher, and they didn't cover much uh, at the end of the month. Even uh, as the stock is moving higher and up through the 200 day. So as of uh, April 31st or 30th, I think you still had a little over 25 million shares short in the stock. So, you know, take it from there. CMG earnings tomorrow. Did they come out with earnings today? Maybe I'm 5, 15, 15. That's what that's saying. Can you check this, Dr. K? It's on CMG. CMGE. Charlie, Mary, go for Eddie. Is that right? Did I say that right? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, yeah, okay. Several weeks ago. Earnings come out uh, tomorrow or today or tomorrow. I don't know. The 15th it's, is tomorrow. it's a Chinese stock, so their, their timing is uh, can be a bit unorthodox. Yeah, you know, my view is if you're going to play Chinese stocks, go with uh, – Go with go with the Baba. Go with the you know the JD is working. So my guess is you may see Baba come out after it. And I, I think the news. I thought the news yesterday that uh, you know they're going to use uh, Walmart's going to use uh, AliPay, which is their mobile payment system in China. Think about it. If if Apple's big with mobile payments now, and that's a big area, and Baba pretty much owns China. Um, maybe they'll probably compete with Apple, but you know, the Chinese may be more parochial and decide they like Alibaba better, but, you know, they got all of China, and China's, uh, how many people live in China these days, Dr. K? Three billion? Oh my gosh. Four billion, five billion? Yeah. I forget, yeah. and they're multiplying, well, they don't multiply as fast, maybe as... Well, yeah, world population is about seven billion, getting to seven billion, so, you know, the Chinese are the, the, the majority, um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. One and a half, anybody two know? Like anybody out there know? Come on, any China files out there? Sino files, as they might they might say. <clears throat> anybody know? Population of China. All right, let's just go search on that. And uh, it says 1.4, 1.4 billion. Yeah, so you got one point. How many people in the U.S.? Uh, 230, 40 million, something like that. 300. I think U.S. is up to what? 350. Really? Wow. Must yeah. be all those. Must be all those uh, Mexican immigrants. Uh, now I can say that because I'm Mexican. So, U.S. is 320. It's about 320 yeah, so, million. So you know what is that? Five times more people. So you know. Yeah. So why why could this be big? Yeah. You know why why couldn't the stock go higher from here as an ugly duckling play? And the other thing I'd be watching, like I was pointing out earlier. Um, We have to get rid of the filter now. One moment, please. Uh, you know, you're going code blue here. So I think it's turning. So I own it. But, you know, so I'm not biased by any stretch of the imagination. But, you know, it looks to me like it's trying to turn. Um, maybe it goes, I think it goes higher. So, uh, you know, put a stop on it. I don't know. I would expect it to hold the if it's hit the last couple of days the lows that it's formed uh, 87 is what I probably expect it to hold on a pullback. Um, and if the market turns and goes, I think this has a good shot at going higher. Uh, let's see. Look at Facebook still going. We need to use my uh, patented uh, 620 chart. And it's starting to turn. And you're actually going to get, if you get above the 50-day, you're, you're working on a pocket pivot right now. You see that, Dr. K? Oh, yeah. So that's what that looks like to me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Solar City moving higher. Look at that. I'm just wondering, I've been talking about it. Are you guys buying it? I don't know how many people it takes. It's, it's actually positive now, 62.34, 38. This is running a little bit low uh, or running behind, so the volume's a little bit low. But you can see that's moving. Um, and so I wouldn't be surprised if uh, this guy comes out of here and moves higher. Somebody liked this stock on the pullback. That's all I have to say. It wasn't me buying that. So you know, with my huge account. Um, anyways, LinkedIn split. 
I'm just kind of cruising through things here. Uh, look at Workday trying to go higher. That may flash a pocket pivot today. So, you know, even the things, when, when I see the things that I thought were short sales and they're, they're acting very strong, and I tend to want to move to the long side of the market. So what do I pick on? I pick on the things that I like that are down in the morning. You know, Baba was down, Tesla was down, FireEye here is down, uh, and it's got that ugly duckling look to it. Before, remember, because uh, you basically violate the 50-day. But that, but in this market, that doesn't mean anything. That means buy it. That's what it means. And uh, you know, that's that. Somebody says the population of China is estimated at 1.393 million people as of July 1, 2014. Okay, very nice. Very good, Scotty. You know how to use Google, too. Uh, okay, any other questions? What time is it? It's almost time to sign off. I don't really have anything to add. I've given my two cents. And, you know, if you guys had all bought FireEye with me at 42.95, and you could have because it hung there for just a little bit, uh, you'd be up all of 20 cents. So, you know, you have something to be happy about. Uh, on a day where you might feel like the market is running away without you. But I still think uh, the general view is that the Fed is not going to raise rates anytime soon. They really can't. And so the market's going to go higher. And what's, you know, growth. Uh, I, I heard somebody say something intelligent on TV. And it's because there was some guy talking about how overvalued the market is. And whenever you start hearing people tell you how overvalued the market is, that's usually BS. Um, you know, I remember people saying in 2003 or when, when did we start a good uh, bull market? Was it 2004, March? When, when did we attack Iraq? March, right, of 2003? No, 2004. And I remember uh, all these guys coming out saying the market's overvalued because there's economic fundamentals, you know, justify a bull market, blah, 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 blah. And, and you know, and then this other guy pipes up and says, well, you know, the market, a lot of stocks may be overvalued, but growth is not overvalued. And I think that's always the case. In any market environment, <clears throat> even if it's tepid, your best shots are going to be in the areas of the economy that are growing. So technology, uh, mobile payments is a uh, one, one area. Cybersecurity is another area. Um, electric cars, you know, with Tesla and the whole battery thing, maybe that's going to work. I think it's partially a short squeeze, too, and I, it's got some room on the upside so Baba's moving now so you know uh, that's where you go and you try to buy things on weakness and in this market if something starts to move up without you relax and wait because it'll probably be back and you'll be able to pick it up at a better price so patience and being opportunistic so I always look in terms you know when the market's coming in what do I want to buy when it's running up is there anything I want to short but I don't really see that here and most of the things on my short sale watch list are acting strongly. So that's given me a clue that, you know, maybe I, I don't, don't really want to be throwing any shorts up. But, of course, at the same time, I'm not getting any 620 sell signals. It would be my first indication that I could start short something that's rallying. Anyways, on that note, that's all I got. Um, thanks for showing up, everybody. And I guess we'll catch you next week. So long, everyone.